everyone welcome back to another video we are powering through these daily videos which is good to see hopefully I can keep it up but for today's video I wanted to run through 15 Australian native plants that have a little bit of a Christmassy vibe that you may want to purchase for Christmas or just plan a little Christmas garden either for next year or just have them in the landscape as ideas for something to kind of decorate over the Christmas period so I've tried to narrow it down to 15, but there were quite a few that I was looking at when I was doing a little bit of research, but I tried to narrow it down to ones that are kind of readily available and that grow in most areas of Australia. Now we're a massive country, so granted all of these probably won't suit your growing conditions, but hopefully there'll be one or two on here that do. And if you are in the south coast of New South Wales, a lot of these um, are actually native to this area. So a lot of them grow well around my area um, and also up to kind of southeast Queensland as well, where it's also kind of a subtropical climate. But yeah, there's so many different plants that have Christmas vibes that are native to Australia. And I thought it would be fun to just go through a few. I'll put some photos up on the screen here. None of the photos, apart from a few video shots um, of some of the plants in my garden, are mine so a lot of the photos will be from online and I don't take credit for any of those photos but I will put a link in the description box below if you would like to do a little bit more research on each of these plants because yeah they're really really cool I've also got my laptop down here so I um, have a few notes on each of the plants I can't remember off the top of my head um, the information about all of them so I will read off my laptop for a few of these plants all right starting out with number one I have to include this as number one and that is is the New South Wales Christmas bush. This is predominantly occurring in coastal areas around Batemans Bay, north up to the dividing ranges between New South Wales and Queensland. It's a small tree, it's very popular in gardens and you can kind of understand why it's called the Christmas bush. It produces really beautiful fragrant flowers around summertime and that's then followed by a red color and it is just absolutely stunning. So if you're looking for a Christmas plant that's Australian, you really have to you just have to get your hands on some of these and I have some planted down the back of the property they're very small now but I cannot wait until they grow they're also great for uh, flowers as a cut flower the foliage on them is just absolutely beautiful so yeah it's probably number one on the list here Number two, I have to add this one on here as well. This is the woolly bush. There's so many different adenanthos out there. Um, I have a few planted in my garden and they are loving life right now. They're often used as an Australian Christmas tree decorated in pots and they can grow between one and five meters high um, and are generally around one to 1.5 meters in width. So they're a really cool tree. They're also a great plant to add to sensory gardens such as for dementia patients and children as well. I know lots of kids and adults love them because of how they feel. Um, yeah, they're just such a great plant to have. They like a little bit more free, well-draining soil. So if you have heavy clay, maybe adding a, in a little bit of sand would benefit this plant. And a lot of them are from southwest western australia so they're kind of like that mediterranean uh, climate so that's just something to keep in mind if you have really wet soils so maybe planting them in pots is a great idea they are absolutely stunning the next one is a little bit different and i've included native mistletoe in this list now a lot of people think that mistletoe is an invasive kind of parasitic species and actually there's 92 types of mistletoe that is endemic to Australia. They, and they're not just parasites, they have a lot of importance in uh, native Australian bushland and in a lot of Australian ecosystems. So they do photosynthesize themselves to create their own food. Um, but they do depend on their host tree for water and support as well. So you'll see a lot of these hanging down from a lot of eucalypt trees and they're pretty easy to spot because they're just really like large clumps of what kind of look like eucalypt leaves but um, often they have berries or they're different colors and they play an incredibly important role for a lot of small birds and even animals like koalas will eat the leaves and the 
the flowers and they're particularly important for areas that have been really heavily cleared um, where vegetation is sparse to provide that habitat for birds and other animals. So yeah, there's lots of different species of mistletoe in Australia. Um, it does have that Christmassy vibe, we all know about mistletoe. Some mistletoe are actual trees. In Western Australia, there's a lot of native mistletoe trees, but a lot of them will just hang off their host plant and they won't really impact the plant too much at all. Number four is native holly. This is probably one of my favorite ones. It is such a beautiful plant. It's a beautiful little rainforest shrub, it can grow up to about two meters tall although it can grow I think about up to four meters in perfect conditions. It grows around the south coast of New South Wales in rainforest around Wollongong and the Illawarra area as well and the leaves look similar to the European holly not as showy in terms of its berries and its dark green foliage but it's still an absolutely beautiful plant and is definitely one to add to your collection uh, if you like kind of interesting foliage and and rainforest plants it's definitely on my list to have in my garden Another plant is the pepperberry. So there's a few different pepperberries in Australia. There's the well-known Tasmanian pepperberry. There's also the brush pepperberry, which is native to around this area here. Um, they both have kind of edible peppery berries. They're such a beautiful plant and, in and I included them because they kind of have like red stems with beautiful green foliage, kind of has that Christmas color to it. And yeah, they're just a beautiful plant. So the brush pepperberry is a little bit Smaller, just kind of grows as a shrub up to about two meters tall and about the same kind of width um, and the Tasmanian pepperberry I believe that can actually get quite tall up to about 10 meters or so um, but usually you'll see them a lot shorter so the Tasmanian pepperberry is more uh, found in cool temperate rainforest area or areas with higher rainfall on the southeastern side of Australia uh, and the brush pepperberry might be a better option if you're in the subtropics around the Brisbane area. It will probably like those conditions a little bit better. Number six, I wanted to include this here and that is some Australian native ferns. I feel like a lot of us don't really talk about ferns a lot when they're probably one of the most stunning showy plants out there particularly when you just have like a complete understory of ferns in a forest it is absolutely beautiful and we do have a lot of that kind of um, ecosystem around here so a lot of ferns will grow with kind of a bit more ready brown foliage as the new leaves come out that'll then kind of turn into that really dark green foliage making them perfect Christmas colors and the two that I included here there's so many different types of ferns so if you have a favorite native as well please do let me know but I've included the prickly rasp fern as well as the hard water fern and again there are so many others out there but yeah I just wanted to include those two here if you're after something a little bit more for a shaded area then ferns are definitely the way to go all right this is another one that i had to include in this list and that is the illawarra flame tree i'll put a picture up i don't need to tell you too much why this is considered christmassy um, but this is native to around the illawarra area it usually grows to about six to ten meters although it can grow a lot taller in its natural habitat and it's really important for bird habitat for butterfly habitat i think the seeds are also edible but just really make sure you're being careful when you ingest any kind of australian native plant make sure you're doing it correctly and yeah it's a great plant it can grow all around new south wales and kind of up towards queensland as well so it, it, so it has a large growing range and is used as street plants a lot of the time it's just a great plant definitely recommend Another one on my list is the black wattle. This one is a little less known and is a plant that I didn't really know of until I saw it at the Berry Public School where I've done some work at. It grows to about three to eight meters tall and is kind of more in a shrub kind of size. The leaves are what kind of caught my eye. They're a real serrated kind of leaf and they have kind of coppery new foliage. So again, those Christmassy colors. And they do have creamy fluffy flowers as well that appear around October and November but yeah this is just a really interesting plant that I discovered and wanted to include it here on the list just because I thought it was interesting and apparently the leaves are also eaten by the larvae of the eastern flat butterfly so it's kind of a host plant for a butterfly um, and does attract a range of different birds and insects for pollination so yeah definitely a cool plant 
The next group of plants that I wanted to include is the salt bushes. Again, their foliage is very Christmassy in my opinion, and a lot of them do have those bright red or pink berries. Or you've got the old man salt bush. There's lots of different types of what's called salt bush in Australia. Some of them are edible, others are just generally grown for like their ornamental uh, characteristics, but is definitely one if you're after some Christmassy foliage. The old man salt bush has some beautiful silvery gray foliage and there's definitely one that will grow in your area they grow really widely around australia there's a few different types so yeah that's definitely one that i wanted to add to this list next one is the snow in summer melaleuca again a photo to show you what this looks like in summer it's absolutely stunning the flowers that this tree produces it is a tree so it can grow up to about eight meters tall melaleuca species usually like a little bit more um, moist soils as well so I would probably plant this around like the back of my property where all of the water kind of runs down to and the whole tree is just covered in beautiful white creamy flowers kind of where the name comes from looking like snow and this happens in summer it's a really hardy plant and can tolerate kind of coastal areas too it does prefer full sun and again yeah it can handle those wet areas of the garden next up is waratahs there's quite a few different waratahs around australia but that new south wales waratah that bright bright beautiful red striking flower is the floral emblem of New South Wales uh, and is definitely one I wanted to include in this list. I think they technically kind of flower a little bit before December but it is a flower that you could dry um, and preserve for your Christmas spread or your Christmas floral display. It is really sad a lot of people do uh, go out into the bush and pick these and sell these um, in bouquets and it's just something that makes me so sad to know that people are just going out there picking these flowers um, when they just look so beautiful in nature. I've gone on a few bush walks and you cannot like not spot them. They just look so beautiful and so striking. Um, and yeah, they're such a special flower that I wanted to include here. They're really widely used in bouquets, but it's always better to grow your own rather than just going out and harvesting anything from uh, natural ecosystems is definitely something that you don't want to be doing and is definitely illegal so just be careful when you're out in nature leave them alone let everyone else enjoy them because they also really are important for our native fauna all right another Christmassy plant is a black cypress pine i think these also may be native and local around to southeast queensland um, but they're a beautiful little tree and they grow up to about 10 meters tall can be grown in a pot if you can source them uh, and get your hands on them but yeah we do have some native cypress in australia so i wanted to include this one here because it's kind of like a christmasy tree next is banksias i had to include them here there's so many different types of banksias so you can probably find one that grows well in your area um, around us the coastal banksia is absolutely beautiful and so stunning i love seeing the banksias growing like right on the coast next to the beautiful like clear blue water around us it's just one of the most beautiful things to see that contrast of those colors there's so many different colors of banksia flowers um, there's so many different foliage types particular banksia serrata has those kind of serrated leaves very Christmassy. so the foliage of that looks great in arrangements and it's just an awesome low maintenance plant that I would definitely recommend having in your garden. And who doesn't love those flowers? They just look so, so beautiful. Birds love them, pollinators love them. It's definitely a must have plant. The second last I've kind of grouped in together um, and that is some native pines that we have in Australia. Pines can be a little tricky to grow. They're very tall and often they're kind of not suited to a smaller garden. But with a little bit of care, they can actually be grown in pots as Christmas trees. So you can have a living Christmas tree every single year. A few of these are the bunya pine, the cowry pine, wallamai pine. But just keep in mind that a lot of these pines, they will need um, care. And I know a lot of people buy wallamai pines because they're, you know, very rare and there was only a small population of them out in the wild. Uh, but pines they do take a lot of care and um, they're quite expensive as well to buy so make sure if you are investing or giving them as a gift that you include some information on how to take care of them or also just do a little bit of research about the soil type you're using uh, and how big they might grow in the pots and whether you can handle that or not all right the last one on the list is a kangaroo paw 
I had to include this. It's just, I lived in Western Australia for some of my life and Western Australia just has some gorgeous, gorgeous flowers. So kangaroo paws, majority of them, I think pretty much all of them are from Western Australia. Uh, there's just some stunning varieties over there and the red kangaroo paw, you can't go past that for a Christmassy Australian native. Again, they're a very low maintenance plant, but they do prefer a little bit cooler temperatures. I know I wasn't growing them around the subtropics uh, around Brisbane, but they might prefer a little bit closer to the coast in Brisbane. I'm not sure. Let me know your experience of growing kangaroo paws if you're in Queensland. I know they grow really great in New South Wales and is something that I would like to add to the collection in my garden as well. All right, we made it through the 15 plants. I really hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you a little bit of insight about some Australian native plants that have kind of a Christmassy vibe to them. It was really fun going through all of these plants and there were quite a few others that I didn't manage to include um, but if you have any other favorites please do add them in the comment section for everyone to read it's so tempting to just go out and buy a lot of non-natives for the Christmas period but we do have some beautiful natives in Australia that I would highly recommend having a look at um, I know even nurseries and even Bunnings is having beautiful displays of Australian natives now so it's really cool to see um, everyone kind of heroing the woolly bush and so many other natives that are native to your area. Do keep in mind that a lot of these aren't probably native or endemic to your specific area so if you are interested make sure to head to a local nursery or a land care group out or do some research online uh, to find species that might be more suited to your area because yeah there's so many species out there and I've just kind of gone into a little bit more of a list of native to this area so yeah Please do let me know if you have any other recommendations in the comments below. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like and subscribe for lots more garden content. I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are in the world. And until my next video, happy gardening, everyone. Bye.